it's story time. Story, story, story time. Let's read a story time. Story, story, story time. I'm geek the story time. Story, story, story time. You and me, it's story time. Story, story, story time. Let's achieve hello everyone and welcome to story time with me, Kayla. How's everyone doing out there? I hope you are doing well and making sure to stay safe. Can you believe we are already at the end of February, which means it's the end of Black History Month? But not really, because we celebrate Black excellence 365 days of the year. <laughs> now, speaking of Black excellence, we are going to take a look at a book from Kid Arthur Chloe Thompson, who is an international philanthropist, speaker, Arthur, and an overall kid boss. So, without further ado, the book we will be reading tonight is called... Dun -dun -dun -dun. The Girl Who Became the Change, the story of Chloe Thompson, written by Chloe Thompson. You ready to see what this book is all about? Ready, set, let's begin. Girl Blazer One, The Girl Who Became the Change, the story of Chloe Thompson by Chloe Thompson, pictures by Cora Stryker. Here we go. She signed it. It says, Chloe cares. Don't let your age stop you. Love, Chloe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here we go. I'm Chloe. If I could do whatever I wanted, I would become president and make a new law that there cannot be any more homelessness. Or you're fired. I'd also move the whole White House to my house so I wouldn't have to fly to Washington, D.C. Hmm. When I was in kindergarten, I would come home from school hungry, and my mom would say, Why are you hungry? You had plenty of food in your lunch. But even when I was little, if someone didn't have enough, I would share my lunch. Aww. I live in a two-bedroom apartment with my mom, dad, and my sister, Kaden, who is always singing. She holds a magic marker like it's a microphone and sings... I love my family, I love my mommy, my sister, my daddy, and my brother, Brayden. Brayden is not her brother. He's her cousin, but she doesn't seem to know that. Daddy, she'll whisper, you're on, action. And she means action, like in the movie. So my dad sings. He can't sing, not even if his life depended on it. But you have to sing when Caden tells you to. Otherwise, she'll start screaming. <laughs> Sounds like a little sister. <laughs> My dad goes to work before we eat breakfast. But when he comes home, he plays the drums. He plays on a mini drum set outside on the patio so the rest of us can think. <laughs> I'm sure that's much appreciated. <laughs> My mom is always on her laptop, or doing someone's hair, or running a nonprofit, or being an amazing mom. Aww. My favorite thing to do is to have dinner with my whole family. Nana, Papa, my grandma, mom, dad, Caden, Brayden, and my aunts. My favorite dinner is spaghetti and garlic bread, because I can make spaghetti sandwiches with two pieces of garlic bread. Yummy. I do the exact same thing. <laughs> Every day on my way to school, I used to pass a woman in a blue tent camped out on the sidewalk in front of an abandoned clinic. Her name was Michelle, but I didn't know that. She had short blackish hair and it looked like she didn't have a brush to brush it. She wore a purple jacket, blue eyeshadow, and brightish pink lipstick. She pushed a shopping cart with lots of plastic bags in it. It made me feel sad to see her every day. Why weren't people helping her? Sometimes you see someone you know you want to help, but you don't because you're too scared. Or you think someone's going to laugh at you. But I knew if I didn't help her, I was going to keep feeling sad. Hmm. My grandma was teaching me how to sew, and I started sewing a bag for Michelle. My mom and I got scraps of fabric from Joanne Fabric. Making the bag for Michelle made me feel happy because I knew it was going to make her happy. 
My dad and I went to the store and bought deodorant, soap, toothpaste, a toothbrush, socks, a washcloth, a rolled-up tarp, and blankets. That was before we started getting donations, so we paid for it out of our own pockets. When my first bag was ready, I went up to Michelle and said, My name is Chloe. I've been seeing you almost every day on my way to school, and I want to give you this bag. She looked inside, looked at me, and smiled. She told me that giving her that bag made her feel human. I had a lot of questions for her. I asked, how did you become homeless? Why are you homeless? Questions my mom couldn't answer. She told me that her landlord kicked her out of her apartment and she didn't have enough money to pay for another one. Hmm. Helping this one person inspired me, and I thought helping other people would inspire me more. So I made more and more bags and handed them out to more and more homeless people. Five a week, then ten a week. Adults just see people on the streets, but from a kid's eye, we ask, why are there people on the streets? I want homeless people to know that someone does see them and care for them. Mm -hmm. That's right, because they're human too. People started hearing about what I was doing, and I was invited to Ghana to talk to a group of girls who loved school but had to stop going because they didn't have enough money for school fees. But then people started sending them donations, and they went back to school. In Ghana, people live in houses that are the size of my living room, a whole family of six sharing one bed. Their houses have curtains for doors, and their kitchens are outside. It made me realize everything I take for granted, like electricity, my own room, and having a stove. In Ghana, you have to light fires when you want to cook. One thing that surprised me is that in Ghana, there is no such thing as homelessness. If there is someone you know who is homeless, your family will take them in until they get back on their feet. Huh. I like that. It's kind of like takes a village. You help out with your neighbor. Well, if I could talk to all the kids in the world, I would say never let people tell you that you're too young to change the world. You have to keep fighting for what you want because if you have a very big problem you're trying to solve and you don't do anything, the problem just keeps getting worse and worse. Being able to help other people has inspired me to try new things and do new things. Now I know I am able to help someone who might not get looked at every day or even smiled at. Never forget that a smile can really change a person's life. The and yes, K Crew, I can't stress enough how much I love this book. You know, Chloe was only eight years old when she decided to make a change in her community. And just like Chloe, you too can make a change, whether you read stories to younger kids in your community or like Chloe, you help out with the homeless. You have the power and the ability to make a change. And don't let your age stop you. <laughs> Chloe is 13 now and she has some amazing projects going on. Her biggest one is Chloe Cares, which is a nonprofit that is dedicated to helping the homeless. So for more information and to find your copy of this book, make sure to visit ChloeCares.com and also be sure to follow her on social media. Now, I was actually a guest on Chloe's YouTube show. I'm going to drop the link in the description below of our interview together. Chloe, a big thank you to you. You are amazing and never stop being you. <laughs> thank you all so much out there for joining me. But it's time to say goodbye. Are you ready? Goodbye, 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 my friends. Goodbye to you. I hope to see you again real soon. Be proud of all your work tonight. Now climb in a bed and sleep real tight. On the count of three, let's say goodnight. One, two, three, goodnight.